the S26 Ultra could have only one new camera, but Samsung will make up for that. The S26 Ultra is expected to feature one new camera alongside several additional upgrades. Contrary to previous reports, it appears the S26 Ultra will not include all the same sensors as the S25 Ultra. Lika Chandan 8888 has shared detailed camera specifications for Samsung's upcoming devices. The S26 Ultra is likely to retain the S25 Ultra's standard 200 megapixels with HP2 rear camera, 50 megapixels with JN3 ultra wide camera, and 50 megapixels 5X IMX854 sensor with the 12 megapixels front-facing camera also remaining unchanged. The 10 megapixels 3X Telephoto Sony IMX754 camera from the S25 Ultra will be replaced by a 12 megapixels S5 K3 LD with 3X unit. The S5 K3 LD is an in-house 1-3-inch sensor that has already been used in Samsung's foldable and mid-range models, and it is larger than the 1 slash 1.3 three 9-inch sensor it is replacing. To ensure that the S26 Ultra ranks among the best camera phones, despite having most of the same sensors as its predecessor, Samsung will implement several enhancements. An option named Adaptive Pixel will reduce noise by combining multiple low-resolution images into a single high-resolution one. Additionally, a 24 megapixels option will be available for both normal and portrait modes. Samsung may introduce a focus speed slider allowing users to adjust how quickly the focus shifts. The S26 Ultra is also rumored to offer the ability to disable HDR10 Plus in favor of standard HDR. Furthermore, the camera is expected to feature a new video format called APV, available in two quality settings. APV HQ, which records at high resolution and uses 1.5 gigs of storage per minute, and APV LQ, which records at a lower quality and consumes 750 megabytes of storage per minute. The S26 Ultra is anticipated to capture more detailed photographs. Although it will likely incorporate only one new sensor, the additional upgrades should enhance the overall photographic experience. The primary 200 megapixels camera and the 50 megapixels 5H unit are believed to feature wider apertures, allowing them to gather more light, thus improving image quality. Essentially, only the ultra-wide camera will remain unchanged, while the rest of the rear camera technology will be upgraded. And of course, there are the software-side modifications that should boost the photographic experience further. The S26 Ultra is expected to feature smoother corners and a pill-shaped camera array. This device will be powered by either the Exynos 2600 or the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 Elite, depending on the region, with a faster chip being paired with the latest RAM technology. There is some debate regarding the charging speed. Prominent Lika Ice Universe claims it will support 60 watt charging, while Chunvin 8888 suggests that the device will utilize a new charging mechanism but retain the same 45 watt speed. The S26 was very close to achieving iconic status, but Samsung opted for a more predictable approach. Since 2020, the Galaxy S series has consistently featured a base, plus, and ultra model, and this trend will continue into 2026. Samsung is eager to include its in-house Exynos chip in the lineup, despite the prevailing belief that it is significantly inferior to Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors. The new phones are likely to receive a warm welcome, and Samsung's ambitious sales target of 35 million units reflects its confidence in the products it has been developing. While this is all well and good, there is potential for greater innovation. Samsung was rumored to be replacing the standard model with a Pro Edition, but ultimately decided against this idea. Little is known about the changes that would have been made to distinguish the Pro model from the basic version, but the concept was appealing in theory. For far too long, standard models have been treated as an afterthought, even though they are premium products. A Galaxy S26 Pro could have altered this perception and demonstrated to other smartphone manufacturers that a flagship model does not need to be overshadowed by higher price variants, but instead could carve out its own identity. The Plus model occupies an uncomfortable location in the line. It offers little more than a bigger version of the ordinary model, which would explain its constantly dismal sales. After all, 
someone prepared to invest a bit more than an entry-level flagship might as well go all out and go for the Ultra. Samsung came extremely close to doing away with a Plus and replacing it with an Edge variant. It was supposed to be thinner than the S25 Edge and boast a horizontal camera bar, which is currently on trend. The S25 Edge and Apple's iPhone Air aren't selling well, prompting Samsung to forego the idea and stay with the Plus model. Rumors say that the Exynos 2600 is not only similar in performance to the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, but also runs cooler than prior Exynos CPUs. Those are the top problems S22 owners have. Samsung must be applauded for avoiding the impulse to bring back Exynos for three generations. After all, if users are paying premium bucks for Samsung's phones, they must get top-tier performance. We have said for a number of years, for a number of reasons, and this has been true in the past, I think for several years, that what used to be a typical relationship at a 50% share, the new baseline is about 75% share. That is always going to be our financial assumption. When we out-execute, occasionally we get more than 75%. On the Galaxy S25, we got 100%. Our expectation for any new Galaxy is always going to be 75%. That is our guess for the Galaxy S26. This year, at least 25% of the Galaxy S26 models will be powered by the Exynos 2600. However, Samsung's safe bet diminishes faith in the Exynos 2600 to some extent. If the processor doesn't perform as well as Samsung wants and falls behind the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, it can irritate customers for having been saddled with a Samsung-made chip. Using its own processor allows Samsung to reduce down costs, yet the savings might not be enough to prevent a price spike. This is simply likely to disappoint customers more, making buyers question Samsung's decision to equip a fourth of the S26 devices with its own chip. The iPhone 17 series and the Pixel 10 have both been selling well, presumably because they capitalized on their individual abilities to stand out. Samsung, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have a defined strategy and is too afraid to bet on big ideas. This predictability may help it avoid terrible surprises, but a safety net is never a viable approach to making it big. Next, the Galaxy S27 Ultra Vapor Chamber prototype allegedly gets pictured and puts every other solution to shame. But don't get your hopes up. Samsung has always made the vapor chamber a standard on its high-end smartphones, with the Ultra Edition getting treated to the largest solution. However, the business could make a radical decision with the Galaxy S27 Ultra, which will assist in increasing its cooling capacities beyond what current generation handsets are capable of housing. A tipster submitted a supposed photograph of a prototype vapor chamber that is being tested for the Korean giant's next generation flagship, and to say that it is thick would be a terrible understatement. The insider adds the actual vapor chamber will be scaled down to be placed in the Galaxy S27 Ultra without compromising the thickness. The photo tweeted by Spygo19726 on X reveals a significantly thicker vapor chamber than what we have seen on smartphones. We can argue that, from this angle, it resembles something found in notebooks, with two copper bases on the top and bottom, with fins sandwiched in between to trap all the heat created from the components, including the chipset. Of course, this would be the ultimate vapor chamber update for the S27 Ultra, but the restricted space inside the smartphone means this solution will not be viable. Instead, the tipster adds that this vapor chamber will be downsized to fit inside a device, suggesting that its footprint will be substantially smaller while being thinner. It should not be surprising that Samsung and a host of other companies employ these bulkier coolers to test out their chipsets. And it is likely that the Exynos 2600 could be cooled by the same solution during its initial testing phase when it ran circles around the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and A19 Pro. This cooler might be a reason why Samsung's first two nanometer GA chipsets scored extremely high in Geekbench 6's latest single-core score, matching Apple's M5 scores, while a few doubters have flatly rejected the statistics as they did not show in the benchmarking database. Still, assuming this leak is true, Samsung is moving on the right path in terms of retaining chipset performance, although we cannot confirm whether the same shrunken solution will make its way to the S26 Ultra next year. Given that Apple has introduced vapor chamber cooling to the iPhone 17 Pro 
and iPhone 17 Pro Max for the first time, it makes sense for Samsung to try to build more robust heat dissipation methods for smartphones like the Galaxy S27 Ultra and its immediate successors. So that's all we know for now. We'll be sure to keep you updated as soon as we have more information. Thanks for watching.